Hello, my name is Linda Chardiello and I've been asked to come here today to talk a little bit about um, the meeting that the Kadampa survivors group had with the Dalai Lama uh, in September. Um, I was one of about 14 people who went to meet the Dalai Lama in Cambridge and um, I've been asked to say a few words about my impression uh, of that meeting um, and what I went away with. And the first thing that I'd like to say that struck me um, was how um, massive a presence the Dalai Lama had when he walked into the room. It was as if his presence f just filled that room and his, his, uh, his presence ha had such a lot of warmth and everyone couldn't help but smile um, just being near him. It was quite remarkable really. I don't think I've ever noticed that before um, when I've met anybody um, in any, any kind of similar situation. I have met Kelsan Getso in the past and I can say that I never felt any um, of that kind of massive warmth and presence when I met him. Um, he seemed, um, the Dalai Lama seemed to be just so natural and just so easy going, easy to be with. Um, and uh, with Khal Sangatso, I didn't get that sense at all, really. I got the sense that he'd rather just not be there at all when he was talking to me. Because um, I had a one-to-one -one meeting with him, and uh, it was like he was just repeating the same lines that he would say to anybody. Like I could just been a, a you know, a, a, a blob sitting there. No, I didn't feel any connection with him. I mean, I, I felt... Uh, that the Dalai Lama also impressed me um, for the um, warmth and concern that he feels towards the people who are protesting against him. I never got any sense of him being annoyed with them or embarrassed or, you know, frustrated, nothing at all like that. The, the overriding feeling I got from him was that he was worried about them and uh, he was concerned about the, um, their future in terms of the karma they're creating for themselves through their actions. They have elevated what is really a spirit entity into uh, a Buddha in their minds and they've um, enslaved themselves to this entity through their worship of, of it and um, that is creating the cause for them this is what I understood the Dalai Lama to be saying that is creating the cause for them <clears throat> to take rebirth in the same spirit realm that uh, Dolgi Shugden or Dolgel Shugden exists in uh, as his slaves you know as his servants and it's going to be um, a relationship of dominance and subservience that they're going to be um, creating for themselves uh, karmically through their self-abnegation to, to an entity that uh, can't be trusted really, you know, it's uh, the history of that entity is not something that would make, you know, um, a child sleep well at night. <laughs> when you hear it, when you read about the things that this entity has done to people, supposedly done to people, obviously not through his own hands, but through the actions of, of uh, people who worship him, um, that why on earth anybody would want to um, enslave themselves to a being that um, gouges people's eyes out and pours boiling oil to, into their eye sockets um, uh, so that they die in agony just because they disobeyed him and didn't follow his prescription um, that they that they only should worship should only should worship not Shugden but they only should follow the Gelug school and if they follow any other school uh, take teachers from any other, any other place in the Gelug system then that's the sort of fate that's going to become come come to them I mean it's just quite unbelievable really that these people just choose to ignore that completely they just choose to ignore the factual evidence in front of them in books like the yellow book by Zemi and also the ocean um, of music delighting the protectors by Trijang 
which both explain that this is the sort of thing that happens to people who, um, who disobey the edicts of almost like a dictator god. I mean, he makes Jehovah in the, in the Old Testament look nice. <laughs> you know, Jehovah who smites down his enemies. I mean, George is going to just, just smite down his enemies. He gouges their eyes out and pours boiling oil into them, into the socket. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I, I gave up worshipping God of the Old Testament for the very reason that, you know, why, why, why do I want to worship a jealous God? And, and Shugden is the same kind of entity, a jealous God that wants to make sure you stick to the thing he wants you to do, or the Gelug's school, and, that, and anything else is just uh, considered unworthy, um, or worse than unworthy. Uh, it's, you know, just thinking about it, it... Uh, it's not actually that different from, you know, the the fundamental Isla Islamicists who who um, would do the same to anyone who doesn't um, accept their line of thinking. I mean, it's not actually Allah, obviously, that goes around chopping people's heads off, or Mohammed who goes around chopping he people's heads off. And in, in the same way, it's not Shugden that actually goes along and pours the boiling oil into somebody's eyes. It's somebody who who has decided that they're worshipping this entity. bit about the this um, Samaya thing um, where he said that you know the, the protesters are all saying oh you've broken your Samaya to him but actually um, Kelsen Gatso has broken his Samaya because he's taken Kalachakra empowerment from the Dalai Lama and now he's um, slagging off the Dalai Lama and calling him the worst dictator in the modern world and worse than Hitler and all, all you know evil all these things. I mean, if he he he's broken his samaya as much as, well, more than the Dalai Lama has, because the Dalai Lama has never said anything negative about any of his teachers. He's just said, I don't accept this particular teaching. He hasn't insulted any of his teachers. He hasn't actually gone against them. He's just said, well, thank you for giving me that teaching, but actually, it's not for me, and I don't want to follow it. And um, that's his uh, that's his entitlement. And it's also what the Buddha taught, for goodness' sake. I mean, these people, they're, they're replacing what the Buddha taught, which was that you, you don't accept anything that anybody s says to you, no matter how uh, important they are as a guru or a teacher. If it doesn't sit well with you, you have no duty to, to, to follow what they say. I mean, Buddhism isn't about having faith in, a, in an entity or a person who tells you what you should think and what you should do. It's about relying on your own wisdom, developing your own wisdom. You know, I didn't. I didn't leave the Christian religion that taught me that I had to obey the dictates of God and Jesus to join another religion that tells me I have to now obey the dictates of of, uh, of someone else. I mean, it's actually going back to the Dark Ages almost. This idea that the NKT and the ISC, you know, these Shugden followers have that you know you have to worship the Guru and you can't you can't have any access to the spiritual path except through the Guru. It's like 16th century Europe where you're not allowed, you know, you were told you can't have any connection with God, you can't have a relationship with God without the priest. It's just a control thing. They just want to, to use this doctrine of Lama Yoga, of Guru Yoga, as a control mechanism so that they can keep power over a group of people who, they, who they've convinced somehow that they've, you've got to do exactly what I tell you, otherwise you're going to go to hell which is basically what uh, the threat is in, in, in with this, like, oh, you, if you break your samaya, you're going to go to hell, you know. So many people who actually leave the NKT are all terrified about this idea that they've broken their samaya. Um, but, uh, in fact, I had somebody having a go at me just the other day on a, a comment thread uh, saying that I'd broken my samaya and shame on me, you know, shame on you for breaking your samaya. And I was like, what is this, you know, you're trying to guilt trip me are you trying to shame me? Is that uh, is that what you do to people who who criticise you? That that's like that sounds like a cult um, strategy, isn't it? You know, if the, if uh, if a member has something to say against uh, the teacher or the teachings, that that that, uh, that they're shamed as being somehow a bad person. You know, which is I don't buy it at all. And I and I'd said to this person, I'd never even had Samaya with Kel San Getso. When I started studying Buddhist teachings through my association with the NKT, 
I remember reading, you know, The Joyful Path of Good Fortune, and I think the first chapter was you have to rely on a spiritual guide b before you can access the spiritual path. And I remember thinking, well, that's a bit of a shame because I don't have a spiritual guide. <laughs> and, uh, and saying to Deirdre, um, or this woman, saying, and I said to uh, the woman who, uh, told, who introduced me into the group, that who's my spiritual guide then? And she said, uh, well, Geshe-la is your spiritual guide, of course. And I was like, well, how can Geshe-la be my spiritual guide if I've never even met him? He doesn't know me. I don't know him. That's not a spiritual guide, is it? So, anyway, so <clears throat> I don't accept, uh, I don't accept um, the, uh, the Samaya idea in that context, at least. And I, and I don't accept it um, uh, in the context of um, that you must keep your loyalty to someone who, who's a fraud. I mean, you know, if you if you are foolish and well, not foolish enough, but naive enough to get involved with the NKT and don't really understand what it is you're getting into, which is which is what I didn't. You know, I didn't really understand what I was being led into. I thought it was all, you know, harmless stuff and was only going to help me. But after a short, well, after a few years, I realised that it wasn't just harmless stuff that was going to help me. I was being threatened with going to the hell realms if I if I turned my back on it. And other, th other things I'd like to mention are um, to do with the fact that the, the way the NKT uh, protest against the Dalai Lama um, saying, give us religious freedom, I think it's very interesting because um, I think what's going on here is, is a pure projection. It's, it's as the Dalai Lama said, when he, in, when he himself worshipped Shugden, um, or propitiated Shugden, he, he didn't have religious freedom. He didn't have religious freedom to study from other traditions because he worshipped Shugden. So he had to give up Shugden worship in order to have religious freedom. Now these people in the NKT and um, uh, other pro-Shugden groups, they um, they don't have religious freedom. They, I mean, in the NKT, they they do very, very much say that uh, all you need is to do is to read Geshe, Geshe La's books, listen to Geshe La's teachings, you don't need anything else. In fact, not only do you not need it, but you shouldn't go there. And if you do go there, you're frowned upon for it. So the people in the NKT that have kind of bought into this kind of mentality, there's subconsciously, they know that their religious freedom is being um, repressed because they're religious freedom is being so uh, suppressed or repressed by their involvement with the NKT, they can't actually acknowledge that that's what's going on. Um, rather, they say things like, oh, it's my choice to practice my tradition purely. Um, but subconsciously, they, they do know that they're being having their religious freedom taken away from them. So when they're standing there saying, Dalai Lama, give religious freedom, they're just projecting their own sense of being restricted with their religious freedom that they're getting from their own guru. Nothing to do with the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama can't give them religious freedom. He's got no control over them at all. They can do what they like. Except they can't, because Kelsen gets so and the NKT tell them they can't. So it's just transferring that probably subconscious hostility that they, that they can't acknowledge to themselves because of the cognitive dissonance it would create in themselves. And, and they're transferring that hostility that they really actually feel towards their tradition and their guru to the Dalai Lama. So it's much easier to, to create an external enemy that you can put all your hostility on and blame him for everything. And it's so ironic that they're always, you know, in the middle of insulting the Dalai Lama and blaming him for, for all the woes of the Tibetan exile community. Um, they then, in the next breath, say, uh, we shouldn't be blaming others for... Uh, for uh, how we feel, we should look to ourselves. But that doesn't, that never applies when it comes to their attitude to the Dalai Lama. Another thing I'd like to, to mention is um, this banner that I've seen so many times that they have, which says, uh, Tibetan stop supporting the Dalai Lama. I just find that just so unbelievably offensive and ignorant of, of these people. It, and it, it, the analogy that I can think of to, to to show how offensive it is, is can you imagine in the 1930s the English holding up a banner, holding up banners when if Gandhi came to England saying, Indians stop supporting Gandhi. I mean, it's just preposterous. Why should why should these Western privileged 
supposed Buddhists think that it's their place and their right to start issuing demands, to, you know, to start trying to tell Tibetans what they should be thinking and doing, to abandon their, the, the symbol of their country, the symbol of their freedom, and, 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 and what? Who's going who's gonna to stand up for them if, if they abandon the Dalai Lama? It's not going to be Kelsen Getso, is it? No. And you read Kelsen Getso's book about uh, uh, the Dalai Lama and, and uh, all the horrible things he says in there. He's just, spout, you know, the whole book is just spouting propaganda from Beijing. Just saying exactly the same sort of stuff that Beijing's always said about, oh, the Chinese army liberated the Tibetans, you know, and, uh, and they just say the same stuff, that exactly the same kind of propaganda. And we've got quite a lot of evidence now of all these supposed Tibetans that uh, are uh, behind the same Dorji, uh, you know, anti Dalai Lama campaign. There's plenty of evidence of them hobnobbing with Chinese Communist Party officials now um, to show that you know they're, they're whose side they're on. You know, they're not on the side of Tibet and the Tibetan people. They're on the side of China and the Chinese. It's so it's so obvious. And yet these people, these NKT people, they just have this blinkered view and they just refuse to see any further than the end of their own nose because their spiritual guide, is, according to them, is infallible. And it's just preposterous and ridiculous.